If you've seen The Mandalorian and Return of the Jedi, you may be familiar with the fact that 74Z Imperial speeder bikes seem like the most fragile things in the galaxy. They constantly crash into trees or blow up almost instantly after making hard contact with a rock. This disappointing performance was in stark contrast to what we saw with the widespread use of bark speeders during the Clone Wars. In this video, we'll explain why the Republic Bark Speeder was superior to the Imperial 74Z and why they changed it. Attention, Sergeant on deck! Speeder bikes filled various frontline roles, used as scouts, patrol vehicles, escort vehicles, and chase vehicles with military models packing more armor and firepower, used by both the Republic and the Separatists and later the Empire and the Rebellion. They transformed soldiers into mechanized cavalry, able to get to where they needed to be at a moment's notice. Unlike small scout walkers like the ATRT, speeder bikes used repulsors instead of legs, allowing them to hover above the ground. This greatly reduced friction and allowed them to achieve dizzying speeds, especially over flat terrain. Due to the compact design of most speeder bikes, they could often be transported inside larger vehicles and were best used when one had to cover a lot of ground in a short period of time and enemy resistance was light. Speeder bikes like the 74Z also featured specialized equipment like comlink jammers and were generally piloted by one trooper with the ability to carry a second passenger and some like the Bark Speeder could have optional sidecars or stretchers attached to them. The Biker Advanced Recon Commando Speeder, or Bark Speeder for short, was manufactured by the Aratec Repulsor Company and originally designed for exclusive use by Advanced Recon Commandos, commonly known as ARC Troopers. The Bark Speeder proved itself extremely effective and reliable at the start of the Clone Wars so production was increased and regular clone troopers across the Grand Army of the Republic started seeing deliveries of Bark Speeders. The engineers at Aratec designed the Bark Speeder to be insanely fast, with a top speed of 520 km per hour, or about the speed of a commercial airplane in our world. Although it was rarely pushed this far unless it had a particularly skilled pilot or force user. Each speeder would have cost the Republic 8,300 credits, though canon sources put this number slightly higher at 9,000 credits. This meant you could get around a dozen speeders for the price of one ATTE, quite a good deal if you asked most commanders. It also packed quite a punch with four blaster cannons, two mounted on each engine and two more on the underbelly. Bark speeders saw extensive use on many battlefronts throughout the galaxy, deployed on desert planets like Geonosis, on forest worlds like Kashyyyk, and the skylines of Coruscant, to name just a few examples. They were often deployed in pairs or as larger squads, acting as a mobile strike force designed to attack an enemy position with surprise and speed. They were also highly customizable and could, for instance, be modified with support struts on the side to carry a stretcher for wounded troops. On the planet Kiros, Anakin Skywalker and Ahsoka Tano used bark speeders with sidecars. This granted them the additional firepower and rearguard defense they needed to defeat a squad of separatist biker droids. After proving themselves very popular with the military, a civilian model was created for use by the Coruscant Security Force. These became known as Rapid Response Police Speeders and were completely identical, save for a new coat of dark blue and grey paint and a flashing police siren. The Bark Speeder was favoured by the likes of Commander Neo and his men of the 91st Mobile Reconnaissance Corps over the 74Zs because they provided better survivability on the field thanks to its armor and greater firepower, especially which was useful when you faced an enemy with greater numbers. 
The clone troopers of the 91st were pragmatic and saw no need to transition to what was essentially a flying death trap. In fact, Neo was riding a bark speeder when during Order 66, he killed his Jedi general, Stas Ali, who was riding alongside on her 74Z. Roger that. The 74Z Imperial speeder bike was also manufactured by the Aratec Repulsor Company and was actually a little older than the Bark. The design was based on an earlier civilian model, the 74Y, and was kind of like if someone took a souped up Kawasaki motorcycle, stripped it to the bare essentials, and made it a bicycle propelled by an overpowered Aratec VV318 Scorus Repulsor Lift engine. Like most of the GARS vehicles, it was first deployed during the first battle of Geonosis. It became the dominant speeder model in the Imperial military after barks were phased out, as the Empire wanted to disassociate with Republic-era designs. The 74Z also had a boost that allowed it to zoom ahead and catch up to any enemy speeder. This feature wasn't present on the bark. Having been stripped down to only the most essential parts, the 74Z was lighter and had fewer weapons and armor than the Bark. Despite this, it cost just 300 credits less than the Bark speeder in Legends, though cannon sources discount it at 3,000 credits, a third of what a Bark would cost. The 74Z traded the four chin and engine mounted blaster cannons on the Bark for a single rotating AX-20 blaster cannon fixed to its underbelly. It had a surprisingly intuitive fly-by-wire system and was steered by twin steering vanes tied to a pair of maneuver controls. A pair of foot pedals were used to adjust altitude up to a maximum of 25 meters. The Bark, on the other hand, had a much higher altitude, even capable of escorting LAATs. Wedge and Teals of the Rebel Alliance once admitted that he was uncomfortable piloting the 74Z because it was essentially just an engine and a steering vane. It did, however, feature an instrument panel with basic indicators for heat levels, boost recharge, coolant levels, and turbine pressure. It was usually piloted by biker scout troopers who were specially trained for reconnaissance missions. Their bikes were equipped with sensor packages that included comlinks and comlink jammers. This allowed them to report on enemy units while at the same time preventing the enemy from doing the same. The 74Z speeder bike came in several colors, usually painted to match the environment or mission profile. Some examples are the green and brown speeder bikes used by biker scouts on Endor, as they defended the shield generator protecting the second Death Star. The white speeder bikes variants were used in the Battle of Hoth. Finally, there was the black stealth version used by elite storm commandos, who were also known as shadow scout troopers. This is in contrast to the white paint job that bark speeders had that had a small strip of colors. However, this white looked more like a dull gray after it had seen some use. Some people like Ahsoka would even customize the sidecar with custom paint jobs, which probably didn't happen under Imperial regulation. All told, the bark speeder was a beast of a war machine. The engineers at Aratec must have been incredibly proud of their design, as it was cost-effective and served Republic troops reliably throughout the Clone Wars, making it an invaluable tool in any commander's arsenal. It may not have excelled in any one area, but it was well-rounded, offering decent protection, insane speed, and strong firepower. The 74Z, on the other hand, was designed only with speed in mind and cut corners wherever possible, leading to an overall lower quality speeder. It wasn't significantly faster with a top speed similar to the Barks at around 500 miles per hour while costing around the same. In terms of firepower, the Bark had quadrupled the blasters compared to the 74Z and even allowed for a machine gun to be attached to a sidecar. The Bark shined in an era of open warfare and proved effective against the Separatist forces, while the 74Z was best suited for scouting and patrol missions, where the Imperial presence was strongest. So, that's our take on why the Bark Speeder was superior to the 74Z. But what do you think? What vehicle matchup do you want to see next? Feel free to post your thoughts in the comments below.